Well, coming up on show 410, it's another Saturday special interview. And this week, we sit down to talk EV servicing with an expert in the field. It's Matt Cleveley. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. Hopefully your weekend is going very well. My name is Martin Lee. It's time for another interview right now, another Saturday special interview. It's not every week. I know we don't do this every week, but I try on a Saturday to bring you personalities from people, from experts in the field of EVs. And one of the most important things after you've decided to buy one and it's sitting in your driveway is to look after the darn thing. And so, what about EV servicing? Can we really trust those main dealers who barely want to sell us an EV, let alone aftercare as well? Or is there more money for them in fixing all of the oily bits and bobs and catalytic converters and pumps and pulleys and oil filters in a combustion engine? So that's why I sat down with an expert in the field here in the UK to dispel a few myths and fill us in on the details. Now, Matt Cleveley is a third-generation business owner of Cleveley EV. Of course not called Cleveley EV since his grandfather started the business. However, he's uh, moving it into the 21st century and these days training other people to look after your EVs as well. Fascinating to sit down with Matt at an EV meetup I went to a couple of weeks ago uh, the uh, in London, actually. Uh, an event organised by the Renault Zoe Owners Club uh, by Craig, who, again, I want to get on the podcast very soon to talk about making your own EV Owners Club, wherever you're listening around the world. All right, here we go. A brilliant interview today. Not on my part, on Matt's part, of course. I think it's going to be fascinating. I think you'll learn a lot as well. Enjoy this one today, another Saturday special on the podcast. EV News Daily special and one of the things that we have talked about before on the podcast but never had, uh, all you've had is my uh, incoherent ramblings about it is when you own an EV, what about getting it serviced? Well, servicing is, there are fewer parts uh, for a start, um, but let's find out more about that from an expert, Matt, and it's Matt Cleveley because it's Cleveley EV, the family business, right? It is, correct, yep. Three generation business that's evolving to uh, specialise in electric and hybrid vehicle servicing, maintenance and repairs. Yeah. So your business is purely maintaining, servicing EVs, right? The Cleveley EV part of it is, yes. yeah. So we've got the traditional side, Cleveley Motors, and uh, the EV side we're building up alongside just to give EV owners another option. Let's do your story of how you got here. A family business, three generations, right, of, of, of being in the car business. Yeah, so my grandfather, 1962, he worked for Doughty Aerospace, fixing cars on the side, got asked so much to repair friends and neighbours' cars that decided he could probably make a business out of it. Found an old stagecoach house uh, in Cheltenham at the bottom of a, near a quarry route, and uh, he, he took the jump, made the change, and uh, yeah, become a full-time mechanic, and then that just sort of grew from there. Um, my dad and my uncle grew into the business as well, took over through 70s, 80s, um, 90s. I joined in 99 after fully qualifying as a, a technician as well, and uh, was the third generation to, to, to carry on the business. I've been there for well, 19 years now, and uh, yeah, still going strong. What was the moment, I mean, what was the year, when did you, you decide to get into EVs? Was it a, a wholesale shift or did it, did like the first one come through the door or tell us about that? A couple of years ago, um, my wife was driving a petrol car. School run is, tip, as typical school runs are, a mile away from home. Uh, this little Fiesta petrol was not even getting worn. My mechanical sympathy was just <laughs> pining for it because it, it never got hot. You do a mile to school, sit there for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, mile back again. Uh, we had solar on our roof at the time, or we still do now, and uh, decided that it, we to look into electric cars. I didn't know that much about them, um, but I wanted to... Pro- myself professionally mm. as well as personally mm. and um, so just sort of jumped in two feet bought a Tecna Leaf 24 kilowatt uh, fell in love with the driving experience and then sought uh, some some training t- for me professionally on electric and hybrid drive systems and being able to maintain them quickly realized that there were no other garages out there doing this and what with the the love of the way that the cars drove and the simplicity of the way they operated and the environmental benefits as well and the cost benefits Mm. um, I knew that that was the direction that most people should go in and so uh, we created Cleveley V just over a year ago um, as an EV promotional business to uh, help switch over 
create a mass market adoption for EVs. When you come to do training to learn about them, even that must be, I mean, it's not like you can go just anywhere and learn about fixing EV in terms of upskilling yourself. No, no, you have to search for, for, for courses, but there are ones out there. And uh, actually in, in March and April now, we're running a level three and level four uh, registered course a qualification mm. in EV hybrid uh, servicing maintenance and then uh, repair. So uh, there isn't many places to go, but I wanted to not open it up to all other independent garages, but to allow other independent garages in to, to, to find training easier. Yeah. As, as, is, uh, as is my persuasion, I tend to simplify everything on the podcast and also when I'm selling EVs to people. And when they go, what about servicing? And I go, there isn't any. There's nothing to go wrong. Of course, there are bits to go wrong. Um, what is the, although I'm being, you know, sort of half, half tongue in, cheek flippant, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, although i'm being i'm being flippant <laughs> what are the what are the big things that people if they're listening to the podcast and they're ev curious what are the things they need to think about so there is there is a lot less maintenance that is true um i don't believe that there shouldn't be any maintenance and so what we offer at cleveley ev is um low cost real life maintenance so the mm. dealers are out there uh, nissan leaf for instance 150 or 200 pound services mm that is ridiculous really it's it's three times as much as it should be mm. so we're offering because there is very little to do pollen filter levels check we want to keep cars safe otherwise uh britain's national safety road record will just go mm. off a cliff but mm. as, as people think well i've got an ev therefore i don't need to to look after it but yeah just we want to concentrate on focus and look after the main safety items make sure that car is reliable and everything's pointing in the right direction and just give it sensible costs to that mm. of course there are bits that that go wrong so our our zoe is two years old and it's all it's nearly all regen but the zoe works by if you don't know by the way if you're listening to it in a, a part of the world where it doesn't have a zoe it's the kind of regen where if you put your foot on the brake the regen gets heavier it hasn't got flappy paddles and so there is a point at which regen will give up because you're going too slowly or the friction brakes kick in and the friction brakes on my two-year-old car have barely been used. Mm. So I, I give that example of the brakes won't need changing um, for a long time. But uh, on the Renault Zoe forums, there are people who have had, uh, I don't know, some wobbly bits underneath, links or something, uh, replaced under warranty because they go, or it was a new part that wasn't on the Clio platform it's built on. So it's not the bits i guess you are looking for bits you know because you can get a car up on a ramp and have a look underneath and and you know the sort of the, the things that you need for the mot as well although there's no emissions there are still plenty of bits that are there for safety yeah there are steering suspension components and uh, like you say the brakes aren't used and that often but doesn't mean that they shouldn't be checked it's actually almost more of a reason to check them uh, we see quite a few teslas with um, seized brake pads certainly on the front uh, because the brakes have used very little and that causes and leads to brake discs being warped and things like that so just because brakes aren't used it can cause as many problems mm. as overusing them and yeah we've seen uh, teslas at 140,000 miles still on their original brakes <laughs> so yes th- th- from that side of things but um, there are still safety checks to be done and reasons to to have your car inspected annually an mot don't forget is only a very basic safety check for roadworthiness on that day an experienced technician would be able to go through a car and not predict the future mm. but be able to tell you what things are wearing and give timelines as to when those uh, items should need replacing or not. So oh, that's interesting. Of course, some of the bits. You know, uh, my first car was a 1996, no, 94 uh, Fiat Panda, which if you wanted to do have a little play yourself uh, as a you know 17, 18 year old, I, I could. These days with cars, the advice I would give to anybody is just don't even bother. They're just It's just a big computer. But with EVs particularly, things like the traction battery, potentially dangerous, very high voltage, but also some very expensive bits there. So, there's, I mean, people can't really do a lot themselves. We're moving very quickly away from the time where cars were part of the family. Mm. My father, even myself, you'd spend the weekend tinkering with your car, changing what you can change, and like you quite rightly said, have a little play with it. But we don't really view cars like that. We don't they're not part of the family we don't love them like that anymore mm. um, we they are just A to B they're becoming a domestic mm. white good one thing I have noticed with 
EVs, it does incite that passion back in your car again. And no, you can't play with it, you can't tune it, but you can enjoy it, yeah. you can love it, you can polish it, you can bring it to car shows like they're at today, and you can talk to other like-minded owners, and there is as much pleasure in that as there is with trying to tune it and, and spending yeah. the weekend covered in grease and <laughs> <laughs> and smashing your knuckles apart. So, Yeah, I must admit, I, although I don't own one, I have many times spent, been on eBay thinking, should I buy the Can the Can ZE little uh, OBD2 dongle thing, just so I can see my battery temperature? I'm like, no, I don't need to, I don't need to go down that. I like, I, I'm into it, but I'm not that much into it. So one of the things that, of course, the really expensive bit of an EV is the battery. And if anyone who's EV curious listening to the podcast, well, firstly, manufacturers have pretty stellar warranties. But should they be worried about things like, because that's an expensive part if it goes wrong? It is an expensive part, yes. But I think given time, and certainly companies like myself are looking into battery reconditioning and being able to offer swap outs on back, traction batteries even this morning my phone rang uh, a leaf owner with a dying traction battery looking for a low cost alternative so that's something we're very much working on to be able to to offer is a, a swap out situation I love these YouTube channels like EVTV where they'll get a a wrecked Model 3 that's, I don't know, been in a flood or something and they'll take the battery pack out and tear it apart. It's just, you know, the geek in me loves that. Are you going to be making YouTube videos of taking a Leaf battery out? I'm not the kind of person (laughs) traditionally that would love to uh, go and actually uh, make videos of myself, but I'm starting to become aware it's what people want to see and if I'm there doing it, then and it benefits people then i'm quite happy to well normally you wouldn't find me in front of a microphone but you've managed to coerce me into i'm I'm, I'm (laughs) actually uh, persuade you into your this is is this your model x no no it belongs to joe borton um he's he lives very local to cleveland he's headquarters and um there were seven of us coming so we came along in this we were going to bring our model s Yes. but uh, limited room in the car park here so we uh, we all piled into one car that can take us all Fantastic. So if people want to find out more about what you do, and it's interesting, you've got the business started where it did, but now it's into training other people. How can people find out more about Cleveley EV? Uh, social media, website is uh, cleveleyev.co.uk. And um, we're always at the end of the phone as well. So yeah, we try and be as active as we can on social media just to give a everyone a, a view of what we do we're very open house and certainly with the servicing side of things we get a lot of tesla owners that come in and wander around the car whilst it's on the ramp mm. and we talk through what things are where they are and yeah what their what their car does i think that's an interesting thing about it that you're happy to talk to people uh, because i think you're, you're right when you say that you're right i am more into this car than the diesel golf that was on our driveway just because i'm more curious about it and yet there is an an irony that I would love to talk to them more. I'd love to talk about to Renault about it. But through no fault of, or just through circumstances, if I were to take that back to my main Renault, it's a, well, well, my local to franchised Renault dealership, they really don't want to know as much as if I was taking a fossil car back. I, I even talked about, I even said to them, oh, has it had the BMS update? It's a two-year-old, it didn't need the BMS update on the Zoe. But I was talking to them about that, and they were like, oh, yeah. And they, my, the response when I was buying the car was, yeah, people talk to us about that, but, you know, it's not that important to get it done. And they brushed me aside and didn't want to talk about that. Whereas, so people can kind of contact you or even, you know, come in and have a good old chinwag? Of course, yeah. That's why we're there. Um, we, we appreciate and are, are open to everyone um, to try and convince people to have EVs and also ones that are already converted. We haven't got anything to hide and we like the fact that they've taken that decision to, to, to change to EV. But our family business has always been good old-fashioned customer service mm-hmm. and I'll carry on that through the uh, EV side of things as well. Um, because main dealers are very closed they don't like the technicians don't like talking they're all about making money Mm. and i know our business wouldn't exist if we didn't make money but it's not just about the money it's about satisfaction customer satisfaction and keeping the cars on the road and keeping everyone safe brilliant brilliant all right hey thank you so much no problem it's been our pleasure well thank you matt and if you want to find out more check out cleveleyev.co.uk I like that. It's a good one today. Ah, look, all the interviews are good, aren't they? But I particularly enjoyed that and finding out more. Well, here we go. Thanks to myev.com. Your question of the week is, 
just a day away now, so get your comments coming in on email and YouTube and Facebook and the rest. And here is the question. How do you feel about Tesla's move to online-only sales? Do you want to test drive a car first, or are you happy to buy your car like you do your fridge freezer or your mobile phone? Well, heck... Even your fridge, freezer, or your mobile phone. Maybe you'll go in store and have a play with that first, which you can't do with your Tesla. Do you even care? Or when it comes to cars and really big purchases, is that the time and a place when you you really do want to just have a little go in it first? And maybe there's alternate ways for you to do that. Well, send me your thoughts for tomorrow's show. I'll read them out. Email address, hello at evnewsdaily.com. Thank you to the 197 patrons of the podcast who keep me going. Thank you, as always, to our premium partners, Phil Roberts from Electric Future, Paul Hussey at electricmotoring.net, hiring your Teslas in the Chicago area, and Brad Crosby as well, who sent me a fascinating interview this week. Uh, sorry, a fascinating email this week, uh, which I will fill you in on the details tomorrow when we're talking about question of the week. Right, we are done for another Saturday special. If you like your news, though, and you haven't caught up, a reminder, 409 previous episodes. I'm not expecting you to listen to all of them. That's not your homework. But, you know, maybe a couple that you've missed. Go back and listen to those and get new ones by hitting subscribe so you can download the new show automatically without even thinking about it. First and free. And straight onto your device. Come and say hi on the socials. In the meantime, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter by searching EV News Daily. Do have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.